Okay. So it's time for the first bonus mission of X Punks. And this time we get to play as Mutex, and he's uh, doing something for a game called Bloodlust Online. Uh, this game's kind of like, or this mission's kind of like a bit of a, of a, a little bit of a quest, I'll say. Uh, there's a few like specific steps that we have to, to go through. Uh, let me go to scroll down. We have a, a file 300 has some keywords that we're going to have to do. Luckily, they're pretty much in the order that we need them to be. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is find which of these six hosts is Mutex's base or his hideout, because uh, that one will contain the talisman. So file 200 in each of the uh, hosts is a list of the items that are available in that host. So we need to find which one has the talisman. That's step one. So let's take a look at our solution. You'll see the solution looks pretty dang long, don't it? Uh, <laughs> so the first thing Execution Agent XA is going to do is he's going to grab file 300 and link across 800. And we're going to copy the word talisman into X. We're now going to create six, six agents that are going to go into the six different hosts, grab file 200, and look for the word talisman. So I'll, I repl find talisman. This guy is going to, based on the value of T that I had, I'm using my T loop trick to figure out and make them loop a uh, link because it's 800 through 805. So uh, we can use pass in T and add it to 800 to make them check all six different places. But we'll look at one individual. He's going to grab file 200 inside. He's going to seek one forward because the format of the files, I know this is a mess, uh, is an ID, the name of the object, and then information about that object, which is always a single thing. But right now, we just have to find one that has talisman in the second spot of each one. So we seek ahead one to get from the ID to the item name, and then we uh, will seek ahead two whenever we don't find a match. So actually, can I get this guy minimized? Perfect, okay. So luckily, he's going to find Talisman right away. Uh, and now that he has, we're going to... Uh, we're basically going to read from Execution Agent A that we need the word map. Because the next thing we have to do is once we find Mutex's hideout, we need to find the map that's in his hideout. Uh, so Execution XA0 is going to try and read on the M register to get the word map. Uh, the other guys are going to try and find the same thing, but none of them will find Talisman, and they'll end up fizzling out. Execution Agent A is not quite ready to uh, send out the word map yet, because he's still deploying everything. But once everybody is deployed, that's the next thing that XA will do, is send out the word map to whichever one survives long enough to read it. You'll see XA1 has just finished trying to read its inventory, did not find Talisman, and is self-deleting. So now that XA0 has the word map, He's going to go back to the beginning of the file. I know he's currently on the map, but there's no way of knowing that for sure. So he's going to go back to the beginning of the file and then search it in the same way that he was searching Talisman to find the word map. Once we find it, and I'm doing a little bit of uh, logic here to handle seeking it more intelligently because it's possible for map to be at the end of the list, in which case we have to seek back only uh, like once, whereas... Uh, to get the information because we need we need the word cathedral so i seek ahead two each time to skip ahead but if map was at the bottom and i seek two ahead it would just have me at the end of the file and if i went back two, i would end up on map not cathedral uh it's, it's a it's a little messy to explain with words but this logic here this the the seek to and then the test for the end of file and then the the jump and the seek this is all to handle the case where map is located at the end of the file uh but since it's not we don't have to worry about uh or yeah so normally to get cathedral we'd have to jump back two but if it was at the end of the file we would only need to jump back one that's that's how it boils down to so we seek back, we, f we found the map, we grab the information that comes from it, which is Cathedral. We're gonna send that over the M register back to Execution Agent A. Now that he knows what the name of the hideout is, he's going to quickly pass the word door to XA0 uh, so that he can start looking for door inside this list here. And we'll talk about why he does that in a second. Uh, 
but now that we have gotten the cathedral from our map, we know what the vampire lair's host name is. So XA is going to quickly pass off door to let this guy look for door. And we'll, once again, I'll talk about that in a second. And XA is going to create a whole new set of six agents that are going to go and find the lair. And the lair is the cathedral, which is this one up here. So once this guy comes over here, he has cathedral in his X register. Uh, he's going to recognize that I am in fact in the lair that I am looking for. Uh, and he is going to, let's, let's stay on this guy with all these guys hopping around. It's a little messy. Uh, realizing that he is in the correct place, he's going to run a kill operation four times because there's going to be no more than four inside the lair. I, I went through and checked the different cases. Uh, and then let's see, can I just narrow this guy or minimize this guy down to make this a little easier? There, that works. Uh, he's going to kill off all the enemies, which is one of the objectives here. Terminate all other XAs in the target host. And then it's going to grab file 200. And I can do this while this guy is still reading the file, because no matter what, Mutex's hideout is not going to be the same as the lair. So the agent that would try and explore Mutex's hideout would try and pick up file 200 and error out there because this guy's still holding on to it. Uh... And I guess he even wouldn't. He may not even get to that point because he'll check the host and see that it's not the right host and it'll just self delete. So, you know what? Never mind. That entire logic is. That's what I was thinking in my head, but thinking about it now, that didn't, that's not even important. They, he terminates because it's the wrong host. Uh, so, XA0, in the meantime of all of this, so I guess I put XA0 over here as well. Uh, in the in the middle of all of this, XA0 has found the word door, and now we need to grab the word unlocked. Because one of the objectives is we need to set the door of the hideout or the vampire lair to also be unlocked. But we need that word unlocked. And they say right here, this note, note that the door to Mutex's hideout will always be unlocked. So we needed to find the door in Mutex's lair to get this keyword unlocked that we'll need to, f to do something in the lair. So once XA0 has found unlocked, he will grab the word, store it in his X register, and then he's going to instead of trying to pass that over the global M register, he's going to head back to the main host and pass it over a local M register. That's because XA or XA9, the guy who's in the lair, is currently in a position where he's waiting to receive the word door over the global network. And so to make sure that there's no like miscommunication or race conditions happening here, this guy passes over the word unlocked on a local connection to XA who does who jumps over to a local connection just to pick up that word unlocked. XA0 is going to terminate because his his work is done. XA is going to now work with the guy who's in the in the lair. So I'll move this guy back up here. The first thing that XA is going to do is pass the word door so that XA9 can then go and find the file and find the word door. Finds it there and you'll see, you see the door is currently locked. So, the so what we have to do is uh, mark it as unlocked. And so XA will pass over the word unlocked to nine. The door is now unlocked. OK, next step, the safe. There is a there's a safe and it has a combination. We need to take that combination and write it down to then put it into the clock. So the first thing that we'll do is find the safe. So XA passes over the word safe. That's in our file 300 of keywords. XA9 will iterate through until it finds a safe. Once he does, it'll go back, grab the combination and pass that over to XA to hold on to. And then XA will respond by, OK, now find me the clock and pass the clock over to XA9. Once XA9 finds the clock, he will go back to the details for the clock and he will take the combination, which is being passed back by XA and overwrite it into the file 200. Once we have passed over the combination, XA knows that he is done and he is going to halt. Very verbose. Uh, there might be some ways of making this more efficient, but because the steps on this are all so uh, like unique for each one, the logic you have to do is different for each one. I figured that I would just make more sense to, to handle each step in its own code block instead of trying to like make code repeatable. So I'll just let that uh, run through for a second. Uh, I really was trying to get this one down even faster. I think it's it's 
the histogram looks a little uh big on like the lowest one is the tallest one on the histogram and nobody it looks like is able to get the histogram one bar over to the left which i was a little i was trying for a little bit but uh it was a little messy so i'll let this fast forward yeah i was trying really hard to see if i could get my bar over there but no no such luck i would have to get uh i'd have to cut another uh 18 cycles i think for my average solution to get there and i just couldn't i just couldn't do it but if you do please let me know i'm very interested uh there you go that's the first uh, optional mission